again. So Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to continue our journey into the window function. And if you've not watched my previous video, then I would strongly suggest that you do that first and then come back to this video. So in the last video, we saw how we can use window function to create a section or isolate a section of a table and then perform some mathematical calculations on that section. Now to continue on that journey, we're going to today see how we can calculate moving averages using the same concept. The data that I have today is a stock data. I downloaded this from Yahoo Finance. And if you're interested, the link will be in the description. You can download it from there. This is an Apple stock data. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a moving average on the closing price that we have in this data set. Okay. And we're going to use the date column and the closing price column to arrive at our final output. So this is what we're going to do now. I'm going to open up an editor here. Let me start by typing a select statement from Apple stock. Okay. And I'm going to need two columns from that. First, first one is a date column. And second one is the close column. But now I need an additional column, which will be my moving average column. Okay. And for starters, let's start with a seven day moving average. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, if you remember in the window function or analytic function, we need to first define what type of mathematical operation we would like to conduct. Now, obviously this is a moving average. So we're going to use an average. Okay. So AVG and I'm going to use the column close. Now to start our window function, I'm going to write over. Now, after you write over, I'm going to write the order by clause because I want the section that I'm creating to be ordered ascending by the basis of date column. Okay. So I'm going to say order by date. Now, once we have ordered the date column in an ascending order, we have to create the actual section on which that ascending order will work to create a section. This time we would not be using the partition by clause like we used in the last video. Instead, I'm going to use inbuilt predefined SQL keywords which will be, in my opinion, is something similar to a plain English, which will help us create a dynamic section for seven consecutive rows. And the keyword starts with rows between six preceding and current row. And I'm going to name this entire thing with an alias called as, let's say, moving average 70. Now, if I explain this line to you, all it's saying is create a section with six preceding rows and current row. So if you add up six preceding and the current row, which eventually means seven rows in total, but the work here is not done. We may have ordered the section that we have created, but we have to order the entire table as well. So I'm going to write an order by clause at the end as well, so that my entire select statement can be ordered as well. Now I'm going to run this. Now, if you see in the result, the first one will be same because there is nothing before this row to calculate. That's why this item is the same, but this one says one, seven, one, 114997, which is nothing but this row plus this row divided by two. Then if we move forward to this row, this simply means this plus this plus this divided by three and so on and so forth until it finds seven preceding rows. Okay. Now I'm going to extract this data so that we can check if our results are fine or not. I'm going to click on the save results and then click on this CSV local file. Now I have opened up my CSV file and let's check if it's working fine or not. So this one is the same number. This number should be an average between these two. So if I check here, this is correct. This is an average between these two. This should be an average between these three, which is again correct. And I move to the seventh row. Now, if I look at this number, this should have the seven day moving average. So if I select these seven row items, 168.057, this is exactly the number that we're getting here. Now, when I move on to this row, this should again have the seven day moving average and they should have moved one cell downwards, right? And should have the latest seven rows. So just select these seven. And if I look at the average, this is 167.37. This is exactly what I'm getting here. 
So which means the moving average is working just fine. Coming back to this query, let's say I want to calculate a 15 day moving average. So for that to happen, what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to create a new column and let me just expand this section a little bit. I'm going to paste this exact line here, but because we need a 15 day moving average, what I'm going to say is 14 preceding rows and the current row, which makes it 15 rows in total. And I'm going to rename this as 15 day and I'm going to run this. And as before, this will also fetch us the correct result for us. This time, the new column has been created for a 15 day moving average. So I hope you understood how we can calculate moving averages using the window function, which is very useful, especially when you're dealing with the data, which contains a time series value. So that is it for today. If you're liking my content, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you don't miss any video that I upload in future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.